Sonnet 116 Let me not to the marriage of true minds admit impediments. If I say the word marriage, what comes to your mind? Rings? Flowers? A white dress? A wedding cake? The bride and groom, perhaps? Well, what if I told you that the speaker of this sonnet isn't talking about any of those things? Would you believe it? If you only read the first two lines of this sonnet, thinking that the speaker is referring to a marriage between a man and a woman is completely reasonable. This love, however, is much more than that. It does not change with time. Love's not time's fool, though rosy lips and cheeks within his bending sickle's compass come. Love alters not with his brief hours and weeks, but bears it out even to the edge of doom. No man can live forever, and neither can his love. Therefore, the love in this sonnet is not an earthly love, but a theological love. The next phrase that leads us to believe this is love is an ever-fixed mark. Originally, many believed that the speaker was trying to convey the idea of a lighthouse guiding ships to safety. Shakespeare has never used mark by itself to refer to a lighthouse, however. In his other writings, he always uses sea mark. This leads to the thought that mark here has a different meaning entirely. But if it doesn't refer to a lighthouse, then what does it refer to? Well, the new theory is that it has to do with the sacraments. There are three sacraments in the church that are deemed so life-changing that they cannot be repeated, and it is said that they leave an indelible mark. These sacraments are baptism, confirmation, and holy orders. Notice that marriage is not included in this list. The speaker, however, has already proved to us that this is no ordinary marriage. Therefore, we can imply that this particular marriage is so powerful and life-changing that it too leaves an ever-fixed mark. So, after exploring the meaning of several phrases in Sonnet 116, I hope you now believe that the love to which the speaker is referring is indeed a theological love.